All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Gun Gamers. I'm Kyle. I'm E House. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about what it takes to actually run an event because a lot of people don't have the insight on this. So, we're going to, as both of us have run a lot of events and we have a lot of experience here, we're going to kind of break down all the insanity that goes into And we've even staffed these. a couple of large national events. We have also staffed some large national events. Um, I think we should start at the, the beginning, it, like because when you're staffing, uh, creating an event, even from you know, I run a small 30 to 70 person events all the way up to the 800 person event that we just did an AAR on. It's th there's a huge tier, but a lot of the core concepts of what it takes to run an event are the same. And I would say the number one thing it starts as is you have to create, uh, and I do things a little differently than some people do. I create a scenario first that sounds interesting that comes up with a you know something that would be cool a good way to play out and that's the first step of where I start and then what I kind of do is I try and bridge into well how do I turn that into a game I come up with a cool idea first and I say how does this work logistically because I think a big step is a lot of people don't realize that when it comes to making an event coming up with a cool idea is one thing but you need to turn it into some way that it works uh, mechanically, where you're not gonna run into massive issues. And you have to think through every scenario and every question that someone's gonna ask, like, well, can I do this? Because someone's gonna ask that question. No matter how stupid it is, someone's gonna think, I could get away with that. And you, ha and you have to start dealing with those. Um, yeah, I would say, so step one, obviously, idea. You need, if you're, just don't say, oh, I wanna run an airsoft game because I think I would be good at it. I mean, maybe you will, but what game? Like, wh what's the game? What yeah. are you doing? And don't say, oh, I have this super elaborate story scenario. As Kyle said, yes, the story scenario can be a good starting point, but you need to turn it into a game. And I would say, honestly, in some cases, I've had mechanical ideas before I've had scenario ideas. Correct. Yeah, you got to, uh, I would say the number one area that when, so, especially a new op planner, you know, designing a game, the number one area that falls apart isn't the story side. It's the mechanics. Because the mechanics, the easiest thing you got to think about is you got to think about spawns. Spawns, number one, spawn, spawn, spawns. Everybody screws up spawns when they first start running their own airsoft games. It happens every time without yep. fail. And because people are always going to try and flank, they're always going to try and, you know, camp somebody's spawn. And you got to figure out mechanics of how you're going to deal with things. Where could I place the spawn where this is less likely to happen? How am I going to deal with it if it becomes an issue? Because you know what, I'll play, I place games and you know what, I, I'm getting pretty good at placing it so spawns don't camp on each other, but I still have two or three plans in the back of my head of how I'm going to handle it if it becomes an issue. Well, because you have to, you, you have to have contingencies. You have to have contingencies and you have to assume that, um, people are gonna blow through objectives because sometimes that's gonna happen. Sometimes people are gonna get out there, they're gonna get absolutely nothing done. They run into a nice even gridlock. They're gonna be fighting hard all day. They're only gonna get a couple objectives done. It's gonna be great. Other times, you know, just because of the skill of the players, they'll show up, they'll blow through all of the objectives in like 20 minutes and then you go, oh God, what do I tell them to do now? And you need to have backup plans. You, um, uh, another prep thing I do is I carry extra just random fragos in a bag with me. So if I need to do something, I'm always on the field and I'm just going to drop something. I'm going to call it in and be like, here's your new frago. And, and that's how I'm going to drop it because you have to be prepared and you have to be prepared with backup plans and your backup plans also need backup plans. Yep. And that's very important. And, and I think something else that, so I'm going to, I'm going to kind of skip ahead just a little bit briefly. Something that helps with that is you, Yes, you need one person acting as opcom. Yes. Maybe at some fields you only need one ref, but I don't know. Uh, generally, good idea to have more refs than not. Yep. Uh, but on top of that, I think you need to have players on each team who are, and this is something that I think stands up to scrutiny because pretty much every national event does this. Yep. You need players on each team who are practically staff. I would say your commanders of each team should be staff and staff who are willing to set aside the best interest of their team to act in the best interest of the game. Right. And that sounds crappy, that sounds like you're rigging the game, that sounds like, oh, you know, no one's gonna win. Not necessarily. Uh, you need to have a commander who will say, okay, yes, we're winning in this regard and for these reasons, but I need to pull these guys back, maybe reassign them, do something else, so we can facilitate another objective to keep the game moving, and then we can go crush that objective. Yeah. It, that's the, it, it's gonna sound really weird, but like how I design games is I always design them with, 
he's going to be leading a team. Someone else is going to be leading a different team. And we're all going to be talking to each other the entire yep. game. And it's not because, you know, we're not going to be shit talking each other. We're not trying to crush each other. And we're, I mean, we want our team to win. But uh, at the end of the day, what we're going to do is we're not going to make 50% of the players suffer because one team was just happened to be better equipped. That, that doesn't make any sense. And then people don't have, because if you have a, if you balance it so both teams are having a challenging time, even if that means one team still wins, everybody has a better time. Exactly. And, and the number one thing, when you're designing it on, it shouldn't be so one team should win. It should be so you're designing it so everybody's going to get good trigger time, good objectives, and is going to go away from that event and say, that was awesome. That, exactly. That's the number one thing. And especially if you're going to be... Uh, even if you're doing a CO on a team for the first time and you're not running the event, if you want everybody to have a good time, you notice your team is crushing an objective, well, you know what, pull some of them out, throw them on a different objective. Because it, it, even if your team crushes one side and crushes the enemy to the other spawn, that gets boring. I've been there, I've done that, I've crushed people. I don't care, I'll go do something else afterwards. Because you know, I don't feel good just shooting people who can't get out of their spawn, that, that gets boring. Yeah. So it's a turkey shoot. It's it, no fun. It's no fun. I mean, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm sitting here with my Crytac, you know, shooting down one lane of people coming out of their spawn. It's like, great. Great. Like, this, this is what I paid thousands of dollars for my gear to do. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Um, uh, and uh, that comes back to spawn placement. It's, spawn placement is huge. Strategy, though, uh, for dealing with spawns. One good strategy is separate the spawns physically yes, a lot. A lot. And then have the objectives equidistant between them or offset between them. Correct. So what that does is it makes it where, hey, they have no reason to encroach on each other's spawn. There's nothing there. There's yeah. no reason to go there. There's exactly. nothing. That, and that's another thing to have lots of objectives. Because if you have tons of objectives, none of them are going to be by the enemy spawn. That's great. And a lot of times what I do is I let people know before a game, hey, both these spawns are here and here don't camp them and that actually as simple as that sounds believe it or not that usually works it helps a ton because if they know where the other spawn is they know what it's like to get spawn camp because everybody's had it happen to them in Arizona. even better yet if they're really smart and there's only two or three of them looking for something to do they're gonna say well we're not gonna go by the enemy spawn because there's probably like 10 dudes in there exactly so. <laughs> i mean but so after you come up with your idea, you come up with the mechanical side. Then what you gotta do is you gotta get your props out there. Usually a lot of times what a lot of fields are doing, and including ours, is we set the props out a lot of times the day before. A lot of them. Some of them we end up taking out on point, um, <laughs> but you gotta set up the props the day before. Then what you need to have is you need to have a group of guys. Because running an event as one person is impossible. You cannot do it. You almost I, quit doing that. I almost quit trying to manage an event by, like manage events by myself because it just became so much work so ridiculous i was running everywhere constantly it is not a good experience the players suffer and you will definitely suffer for it it's don't do it you want a good group of guys you want your commands being on your page and you want your uh and you want other players squad leads just someone who can help you if you can have roaming refs that's better all depending on the size of the game uh another important thing is definitely the amount the ref to players you know yeah you, you need to have you certainly need to have enough refs that you can generally assign them a zone that they'll wander and they'll be able to cover that zone. Correct. You need to have refs who will at most at most times have eyes on most of the action. Now, I'm not saying you need to have a ref every 30 feet or something like that, but I'm saying let's say you've got Hunter's Creek. Yeah. If you've been to Hunter's Creek, you know what that looks like. Generally, you'll probably want to have a ref or a staff at least on each side of the ravine. Correct. Uh, and you need to have refs who are willing to do the walking because you know what? In some cases, you and I can both vouch for this, refing is more physically intense than playing in yeah. some cases. If you're walking all over a field, carrying stuff, delivering objectives, managing players, that gets very exhausting. You need guys who are in good, frankly, in good enough shape to do it. Correct. No, I mean, when I'm running the, uh, now my field, the playable area is probably only about 30 acres is what we play in. So in a 30 acre field during a course of just one game day, I will probably walk like five to six miles just solving problems, dropping off props, dealing with any potential ref issues. You do a ton of movement yep. and you gotta be prepared to do that movement that you're gonna be running around solving problems all day long. If you think you can just sit back in a staging area and call it in over radio, it's gonna fall apart. You might be able to get away with having one guy doing that. Yeah. But you better have people out you on the field You better have bodies. Too. Yeah, you gotta have bodies. If you don't have bodies out on the field 
repping, fixing stuff, stuff like that, you're gonna have so many problems. And inevitably, even if you have those bodies, you really should. And you know, even in that 800 person game, you if you're that head guy, you're gonna have to step out there at yep. some point for some reason. And you gotta be prepared to do that and not consider it a bad thing. It's just part of the job of running one of these events. Yeah, I mean, in some cases, it's part of the fun. It's part of the fun, yeah, absolutely. I mean, random bro tip, just okay. yep. total, totally not official tip, but it helps. If you want to avoid going insane during a game, have the dudes on your admin channel be fun guys. Yes. Because if you and your buddy, because that's what it is when we run games. Yeah. It's us and our buddies putting on a game just for fun. We do it for fun. Yep. And if you get this group on audit admin channel, it's there's just it's great constant horrible jokes uh just really bad stuff happening yeah and no, it's fun and it keeps your spirits up you know even yeah. if there's a problem you know you just make jokes at each other and you go and you solve it and stuff like that you gotta gotta go and you gotta have the right attitude for it exactly and it, uh, number one thing for another big thing for an op plan is never expect the players to do what they're supposed to do no never expect them to and, do and that. that was a weakness of mine when i first started running games is i would plan games to excruciating detail yeah. of everyone had to do this or everyone had to do this by a certain time and at a certain time they better be here. And pretty quickly I learned that that doesn't work. No. Uh, you need to anticipate chaos time yeah, because that's what Airsoft is. Airsoft is chaos. Yeah. So you need to embrace that and you need to be ready sometimes to say, you know what? Technically that's not even an objective that I even thought of, but Whatever, it's an yeah. objective now. They want it, it's cool. All right, cool, let's turn it into a frag out. You know, oh, they didn't meet this objective, well, let's throw them somewhere else. And that it goes back to the usual thing. Always assume they're not gonna do what they're supposed to do. Yep. Always. Um, and uh, I would say, you know, cheaters are also something you have to plan for. If you have a good group of guys where it's a, a smaller local community, I find it's less of an issue. As you get to the bigger events, you know, sometimes, you know, you get people out there who are dedicated problem childs. Um, you know, if you, I find if you have people, those refs again, and you can put them on point, you're not going to have an issue because the moment somebody has a ref standing over them, they call it, you know? So, uh, but yeah. overall in airsoft, it's not a, it's not a huge issue. As long as you have people in positions to deal with it and they know that, then they're not going to try and abuse it as much. Another, now I know I just said, don't plan everything to excruciating detail, but have stuff written down. Absolutely. Uh, so if you have a basic, so you should have a basic plan yeah. of what the objectives are going to be throughout the day. Have those written down. Have those on a sheet of paper, preferably laminated or in a Ziploc baggie at least, so it's not getting sweat all covered when someone puts it in their vest. Or rained on. Yeah, or rained on or whatever. Have that sheet, have that reference so that you know what's supposed to happen and what you're trying to accomplish throughout the day. Yeah. I, and you know, I would say that's better. Not what's supposed to happen what you're trying to have players accomplish. Correct. And what I do with those written things, when I write out an op plan, I give all teams a complete copy of the op plan, which includes the other team's objectives. Because the CO is the only one who's going to have it. The or CO, staff member. Yeah, CO and staff are the only people who have it. So again, that falls back to, <coughs> is the CO, we can coordinate the game to make it more fun for everyone. And that's really what running a game is about. It's not about crushing people. It's, no. it's, it's really not. Also, if you're gonna run an event, you have to be prepared to deal with people that are gonna break rules and you have to have punishments. You have to stand by those punishments and you just have to, to, to hand them out. Uh, there's gonna be people who try and break rules. You gotta decide when that idiot takes off his goggles, how are you gonna treat it? How are you gonna respond to that? Because somebody's gonna do it and you're gonna have to deal with it. And at the 800 person game, I caught somebody doing it and I chewed them out to no end that they were doing it. Uh, and if, if your rule is zero tolerance and the first time somebody flips their eyes up, you're kicking them off, just kick them off. Don't be mean about it. You know, never be malicious about it. Just be like, hey, you did something stupid. It's against the rules. You got to go. Yep. Sorry, but this is for your own good. Yeah. And if you're running a game at someone else's field, Make sure you establish the authority that you have. So when you say that, it is final. No one's going to be undermining you, and it's going to make it look like, well, shit, I can get away with anything I want. Yeah. Don't do that. Establish the authority. Make it clear cut, and and then people tend to, to stick to it. And people on the team, like the staff who are even playing, should have that authority. Exactly. Now, we talk a lot about problem solving in different ways, 
Uh, but when you are problem solving, like say, oh, this team is trapped in an area or this team's getting spawn camped, honestly, I find that the best solutions are the fun ones. Yes. I, and that might sound weird, but let me give a real world example uh, or a practical example that we've used. Uh, so spawn camping. We used to have a thing where, uh, and in some cases we still do, where by accident, groups will wander up on another team's spawn. It, we said that we plan to have it not happen, but it's gonna happen. It's, gonna it's happen. airsoft. Uh, so if a group wanders up on another team's spawn, usually what we'll do then is we'll say, okay, there's a gunship inbound. So kind of like in uh, Call of Duty, where if you go off the map, the artillery comes down and kills you. Well, it's kind of like that, except if you wander up on a team's spawn and you don't leave, an unkillable NPC with an LMG comes by and starts hip firing at you. Yep. And uh, ironically enough, that sounds like it would be frustrating if you were trying to spawn camp people, but most people aren't actually trying to spawn camp people. So we've actually seen kind of the opposite reaction. People have fun with it. They have fun with it. You know what? Because you all of a sudden, everybody starts screaming gunship. Everybody scatters. Because you know what? The first time, Everybody's like, yeah, whatever, gunship. And then it kills like 10 people. And then they're like, we gotta go. We can't, we can't be here, we gotta go. And it works out. And you know what? Sometimes if you need to break a conflict off because people need to resign objectives, just yell the gunship's coming through. Everybody clears out and if, real quick. And if people have seen the gunship take out spawn campers, they'll have that Pavlovian response of, I need to get the fuck out. Yeah, we're, we're not interested in sticking around through this. <laughs> um, another, you gotta be prepared for the uncontrollable weather. Yes. And you have to be prepared to make players be prepared for the weather. Yep. Um, we had an event in May last year. And it was, we did a cool, we did a theme off of um, the, division. the Division. Really cool. It was a great game. We had a lot of fun and stuff Wish like that. Wish I had to play at it. Yeah, unfortunately, Eric had destroyed his other knee. And, uh, <laughs> but what happened is it was May and we're thinking, yeah, this weather should be good. You know, it might rain, whatever and that. No, it snowed. It snowed in May at the game. And that changed things, and we had to be prepared for that. And you can't assume, just because it says it's sunny the day before the event, you better be prepared for rain. Because it's or gonna snow. rain, or snow. It might snow too. Especially if you live in New York, it might, it's probably gonna snow. Yeah. It might snow next week, we're not, we're not sure. But we, you know, you look at the weather forecast, you try to remind people to be prepared. Uh, and one of the big things, as an op planner, that I think everyone should do, is prepare extra water. Always have extra water. Always. I mean, I think for every Hunter's Creek game, you go out and buy two or three extra cases of water. Two to three cases of, of water. Usually bring. I'm not charging for it. If you're thirsty, you're dehydrated. It's a lot cheaper for me to give you a free bottle of water than it is for me to have the ambulance not find the property again and somebody has to drive you away. So, it, you know, be prepared. You know, be prepared. You're going to give out things like water because people need them. You yep. know, um, uh, in my particular field, I also include lunch with the cost of the event. Most fields don't do that, but again, I don't do it for money, so it's not a big deal. But you got to think about food. Are you gonna, how are people going to handle that uh, at the AO? What's going to be the situation with bathrooms? You have to think about all the mechanical things. Where are going to people park? Who's going to be telling people where to park? Who's going to be people not to shoot their guns around everybody else with their cars with their no goggles on? You have to make sure you stay on top of that. Hi, dog. <laughs> Baku wants to be in the video. He want, he, you know, be prepared. How are you going to deal with your dog? <laughs> uh, <laughs> make sure all of your staff are definitely going to be there. Make sure yes. they're all on the same page of how you're going to be running things, what you want to happen. Because if they all understand that, then they can all push to that and they don't need to be rating you constantly to say, well, what am I supposed to do now? What am I supposed to do there? And stuff like that. Have them all on the same page so they can just make those snap decisions and have the faith in those people that they can make those snap decisions and it's gonna be okay. And if they need to make changes, that happens all the time. He'll be running things like, I'm gonna do this. And I'm like, sweet, okay, perfect. Now I know, the other command knows, everybody knows what's going on. And you gotta have faith that, you know, the people underneath you can do that so it all works out. Yeah, and that's the thing. Be ready for those kind of adaptations and those changes. and. Again, make sure your staff are ready. Don't get staff who are gonna flake. No. I, that sounds easy, but it's not. It's not You easy. need to be very choosy about who you pick to be your event staff and who you pick to be your COs and who you pick to be in charge of everything. That's why, like I said before, basically any game that we go to, it's just gun gamers is the group that's running it. We, we don't go outside of our group for the other team's CO. We don't go outside of our group for uh, getting any embeds. We're just like, listen, 
anyone we know really well personally who's definitely going to be there those are the people we're going to recruit and i actually i had that problem i had some friends uh, when i first took over running a field for myself that i was trying to run these games and i had people who were my friends but they were not good leaders and they were not reliable leaders and and they were just not reliable at showing up to the games right at all and it created a massive stressor and it was a huge issue and you know what you can be great friends with somebody but sometimes they're not cut out for that and th and that's fine you know but don't and and they and some of those people may want the position but you need to understand that maybe they're not right for it and that's okay have a beer with them afterwards put them in a squad position where they can't do much damage you know uh, but uh, don't don't people who you're you know you at the end of the day you say to yourself maybe they'll follow the objective or maybe somebody will shoot at them and they'll just go through 10 mid caps and not tell their team what to do at all you know, you got to know who those people are and where you're going to put them. And that's fine. Yep. But they, you just got to be prepared to make those decisions, which you may have to tell some friends, no, I have someone else picked for this position. And if you don't have good enough friends who can understand why you're making those decisions, you don't have good enough friends. Don't have good enough friends. Um, I would say those are the big core things without going into particular scenarios, scenarios and, and stuff like that. Um, general advice for when you're picking a scenario, what you want is you have to assume that your core player doesn't understand anything and might be able to read. Might. <laughs> and and that's not a knock against you know the player base, which I'm assuming the majority of people are going to be watching. It. You just have to understand that you know people get real excited, things happen, BBs start flying, and you're not going to be thinking about that anymore. You're going to think about shooting back at the enemy. If you throw complex objectives, unless you get some super milsim role playing kind of people. It's not going to work. You want to throw simple objectives. A lot of the core for my design is, oh, it's capture the territory, uh, retrieve an objective, you know, hold this position, that stuff. And I turn that and I add props and I make that into a scenario. So it's immersive, but at its core, it's very simple. And that comes back to where your staff are because your staff, if they understand what the scenario is, your staff can kind of impress that role playing onto any scenario. Correct. Yeah. Well, praise Judy. So. <laughs> praise Judy. Uh, so what you'll get then is you'll get staff who are really into it and their, their excitement gets contagious. And even though these people don't haven't read the scenario, even though these people probably don't pay that much attention, they just hear the excitement, they hear all that and it's contagious and that's what spreads it and that's what helps make people have a good time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, it, it'll be very easy from, you know, on the command side of it, you know, hey, we're trying to capture this device and upload some data and stuff like that. And you got this whole scenario right now and you got some guy who just showed up. He just came back from respawn. Where are we going? We're finding the computer. And he's like, yeah, we're finding the computer. And yeah. That's all he It'll needs to know. It'll be fucking awesome. Hey, you know, it's going to be awesome for him. You're still doing the objective. The super immersive people are like, yeah, we're going to upload that data and blah, blah, blah. That's, that's that tiered level of involvement and you need to plan yep. that into your objectives. But uh, I would say those are your core things. Um, be prepared to run around a lot and uh, be prepared to be really, really busy. If you think it's going to be less work than playing, you are absolutely wrong. Yeah. Absolutely wrong. Because you're going to do a ton of work before, you're going to do a ton of work during, and you're going to be doing work after. Especially because people never clean up their garbage. Oh my God. Never. Never clean up their garbage. I don't know why. It's, it's a problem. Be prepared to clean up a lot of garbage. But I would say that's most of it. Yeah, I would say that's the core. You know, maybe if we, you know, want to add in what it looks like behind the scenes and get some footage of some actual what it's like to, you know, comment at some point. Yeah. But, uh, but if you're looking for a basic outline of what goes what to into expect. It and what to expect when you design these things, uh, I would say this pretty much covers it. If you have questions, you're wondering about doing something. Ask a question in the comments. You know, we'll be happy to answer. Hit we us got, up on Facebook or something. Yeah, hit yeah. us on Facebook. We got years and years and years of experience being involved in all kinds of events local and national for m years so w we can definitely help you out uh but yeah let us know but i would say that wraps it up i'm kyle i'm e house catch you in the next one peace see ya